Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll take up a problem from variable mass systems. So this is from the MCQ section of the chapter, Newton's Laws of Motion. So we have a conveyor belt that collects sand and transports it to a height h as shown in the figure. The sand falls on the belt with negligible speed at a constant rate, mu kgs per second. Friction between the belt and the sand particle is so high that the sand particles stop sliding almost instantaneously after they hit the belt. So the sand particles, they fall on the belt with negligible speed and they start moving up the incline with the speed of the belt in a very small time. So we have to figure out the speed of the belt for the least possible driving force on the belt that the motor has to apply. So let's try to figure this out. Okay, so let's say the belt is actually moving up, moving up the incline with a speed of V. Sand particles that are already present on the belt is moving with the belt in the upward direction with a velocity of V, right? So now let's observe a small amount of mass, dm, that is about to fall on the belt. So it's given that it falls with negligible speed. So the moment the mass hits the belt, friction force will start acting on the dm mass so as to accelerate the dm mass and give it a velocity of v. And similarly, the reaction friction force will act on the belt down the incline. So initially, its momentum was zero. Friction applied an impulse. And finally, what happens is it moves with the same velocity as the belt, which is v. So now we can apply impulse momentum theorem on this dm mass. So initial momentum, impulse due to kinetic friction, which is going to be f dt, is equal to the final momentum, which is going to be dm into. And from here, we can see that the friction force comes out to be uh, the final velocity v times dm by dt. So dm by dt is uh, again just the rate at which the sand falls on the belt. This is given to be mu. So our friction force is just going to be mu times V. Okay guys, so now let's say the force that the motor has to apply is capital F so that it can drive the sand upwards. So capital F uh, should be just enough so that it can balance the impulsive friction on the belt and also carry the weight of the sand that is already present on the incline. So sand is present everywhere on the incline. Okay, let's say the mass of uh, the sand that, uh, that is present on the incline is M. So its weight down the incline is mg sin theta. So the force applied by the motor should be equal to mg sin theta plus mu v if we want to drive the sand up with a constant speed. Okay. Now guys, the mass of the sand, I can write it as the length of this part, which from this triangle, you can see it is h cosecant theta, right? So uh, I can write the mass as lambda into h cosec theta. The cosec theta and the sin theta cancels out and this just becomes lambda gh. Now we have to uh, determine what lambda is. So what we are going to do here is guys consider a line of sand particles that are about to fall into the belt something like this and let's say the mass of this line of particles is dm. Okay so the last particle is uh, is just about to touch the belt. Okay and let's say guys uh, after a time of dt has passed the entire line of sand particles starts moving along the incline. So dt is a time in which dm mass starts moving along the incline. So I can write the mass of this much part as lambda times v dt. The instant the sand particle hits the incline, it starts moving with a velocity of v. So in a time dt, it will cover a distance of v dt. So its mass is lambda v dt, okay, where lambda is the ma mass per unit length of the heap of sand. But the thing is, this mass is actually equal to this mass over here, uh, which was free falling, right? So, and this mass over here, I can write it as mu multiplied by dt. So I can actually equate these two because they are the same mass. So from here we get mu equals lambda v. So now let's substitute it into our force expression. So this is the belt force expression that we get in terms of the speed v. So now we need to figure out the least possible force for a given speed. This is a function of uh, the velocity and we have to figure out its minimum right now. So here guys, you can apply amg, am greater than or equal to gm inequality because we can see that if you take the gm or geometric mean, the v's just cancel each other out. So from here, we what we obtain is the value of this expression mu gh plus mu v divided by 2, this is going to be its arithmetic mean, must be greater than or equal to its geometric mean, which is going to be mu times square root of gh. So the thing is this particular expression over here of whose minimum value we want is greater than or equal to 2 mu root gh. So the minimum value of the force expression is nothing but 2 times mu root gh. Okay. And, uh, of, and in this inequality, the equality happens when either of the two terms become equal. Mu g h by v equals mu v uh, implies the v just turns out to be square root of. So this is the speed and this is the minimum force. Okay. So, so the minimum speed is going to be square root of g h. And in the second option, they're asking us about the power delivered by the motor to the belt when the motor is applying least possible driving force. The force applied by the motor is up the incline. 
and the velocity of the belt is also up the incline. So the power delivered is nothing but the for applied force times the velocity which is going to be 2 times mu gh. And in the third option we have to talk about the dissipated power by the system when the motor is applying least possible driving force. Okay, so this question, uh, the easiest way to do is do it is in the frame of the belt. Okay, okay, and the reason that uh, we can do that is because the power that is dissipated is dissipated in the form of heat in this situation, right? So, and heat dissipated shouldn't depend upon the frame. So, because that, what heat actually does is change the temperature of the system. And temperature is like a frame independent quantity. So, the dissipated power, it should be the same irrespective of the frame that we choose. So, if I observe this entire situation, taking the frame of reference as a belt, then all of the sand that are currently present in the belt is at rest now. The falling sand particles will have a velocity. Now, in the if we take the belt as a frame of reference, then the falling sand particles will get a speed v in the opposite direction of the incline. And uh, we know that after the sand particle hits the belt, it will come to rest in a very small time. Okay, so uh, the force that is killing this guy's velocity is, is the kinetic friction between the sand particle and the belt. So let's say the mass of the sand particle is dm. Okay, so what kinetic, kinetic friction does is that it kills the kinetic energy of the dm mass. And that energy is dissipated in the form of heat. So basically the work done by the kinetic friction is lost as heat. So let's say the small work done by kinetic friction, which is also equal to the energy dissipated, which is also equal to the change in kinetic energy of this dm mass, right? Uh, I'm not writing the minus sign. So this is just going to be half dm v squared. So now as we need the rate at which energy is dissipated, we'll just divide throughout by dt. So, and the rate at which energy is dissipated is basically the power dissipated. And this will just come out to be half dm by dt, which is mu times v squared. And if you guys remember, the velocity v was root gh in this case. So, this comes out to be mu gh by 2. And uh, so, this is the power dissipated in the frame of the belt. And this should be exactly the same even in ground frame. So, now let's see how to do this in the ground frame. So, if you want to do this in the ground frame, guys, uh, first let's write down the work energy theorem. So, the work energy states theorem states that the work done by all the forces, uh, all forces equals the change in kinetic energy of the system. So again, I'm taking the sand plus the belt as the system, right? Now guys, under all forces, we can classify them as a few types. So first is the work done by conservative forces. And these include work done by like electric force or gravitational force in this case, okay? Then we have the work done by non-conservative forces. Okay, and non-conservative forces themselves have two subcategories and one of them is the non-conservative forces that are non-dissipative, that are not dissipative, meaning and this includes forces like tension, normal, normal, in this case the work done by the motor, so on and so forth. Okay, and then we have the work done by non-conservative forces that are dissipative in nature. So this includes uh, friction, viscous forces, so on and so forth. So if we add the work and contribution due to all of them, we'll get the change in kinetic energy of the system. Now for conservative forces, we define the potential energy. So we can write it as minus change in potential energy from state one to state two. And we can send this to the other side. So we can write delta K plus delta U, or this is basically the change in mechanical energy of the system. So for now in this question, the non-conservative, non-dissipative force is the force that the motor applies on the belt, right? So on the belt plus the sand system, if you see the external forces are first of all gravity and the belt force F, right? As we want the rate of doing work, we'll just differentiate this expression. So we'll say the power supplied by non-conservative, non-dissipative forces plus the power dissipated equals to dk by dt plus du by dt. Now guys, so here the, the non-conservative, non-dissipative force again is the work done by force that the motor applies on the belt. And the power due to this force we actually figured out in option 2. This came out to be 2 mu gh. This term over here will simply be 2 mu gh, okay? And the dissipated power is what we are trying to figure out. And this would be equal to the change in kinetic energy of the system. So the belt's velocity is constant, it is v, so it's not changing. Sand, sand's velocity is also not changing, it is v. What is changing is the velocity of the sand particles that are falling on the belt. So if you observe any small dm mass over here, its initial kinetic energy was zero, and finally it gains a velocity kinetic energy of half dm v squared. dk is nothing but half dm v squared. So dk by dt is half dm by dt into v squared, which is nothing but half mu v squared. Now du by dt, that is basically the rate at which the potential energy of the system is changing. System is simply 
uh, d by dt of where m is a mass of sand. So this just comes out to be mu times gh. And from here we can figure out the dissipative power. V is nothing but square root of gh minus 0 0.5 mu gh, exactly what we obtained in the, in the frame of the belt as well. So yeah, that was it for this question, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.